I could get a motion that we only discuss those, uh, those two items. We went into closed session. One item under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1, appointments to boards and committees and town manager evaluation. And one item under Virginia Code 2.2-3711A6, investment of public funds. So moved. Second. And may I have a roll call for that, please, ma'am? Mr. East? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Dawson? Aye. Mr. Klontz? Aye. Mr. Reese? Aye. And then if you would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilman Klontz, followed by the invocation by Councilman East. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'd like to join us in prayer, please bow your head at this time. Heavenly Father, as we come together this evening, we give thanks to you for your many blessings. We ask that you would guide us in all matters. Please grant us wisdom, and may all we do be pleasing to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to welcome all of our guests here and online. Um, wish you a happy Mardi Gras. Uh, <laughs> it's Fat Tuesday, so let's get these festivities going here. Um, well, is there, there is a modification? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Can I move that we modify uh, the agenda uh, after number seven, public comment period um, with resolution 2023-09. Second. And may I have a roll call for that? Mr. East? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Dawson? Aye. Mr. Klontz? Aye. Mr. Reese? Aye. All right, and we'll start with the first thing we have on here is our presentations um, from Pulaski on my main from Dylan Arms. It's a 15 minute presentation or up to. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Dylan Arms from Pulaski on Main. I am the program assistant and I will be giving you a summary of some of the things that Pulaski on Main has achieved over the past year. So we're going to start by talking about improving Main Street in the streetscape. We'll be talking about facilitating meetings for West Main development. So Pulaski on Main has helped the town <coughs> to facilitate these meetings between residents, businesses, and members of the community to help discuss where we are in the West Main waterline project and other meetings. Next, we're going to talk about the sign program for West and East Main Street. So we currently have 13 signs, and these are great looking signs that really make Main Street, uh, both sides, West and East Main, look really uniform and also help people to know where certain businesses and locations are. I want to thank the, the town and Darlene for the funding of these signs, and they, they really do look phenomenal on Main Street. Next, will we go into tourism? And we will be talking about the love sign. This is something that the town also helped with. Um, they fronted us $1,500 to help with the production and making of the sign. And we, are, we're, we have worked with the Virginia Tourism Corporation and Pulaski County Tourism. We have also applied for a $1,500 grant to repay the town. Next, we'll be talking about Counts Crossing. Pulaski on Main has helped to maintain the uh, what we call as the pocket park at Counts Crossing. We have paid about $1,000 for materials and mulch, and Pulaski on Main volunteers mulched it and have been working to keep it maintained, uh, make sure it's weed-free and looks very nice. Next, we're going to talk about the National Main Street Conference. So Pulaski on May was invited to speak at the National Main Street Conference, and we gave a presentation about the tribe and redevelopment going on in downtown Pulaski. I was very proud of being selected and being able to talk about my hometown and just the amazing things that are going on here. Next, we're going to talk about marketing Main Street. 
as of January 1st, Pulaski on Main has officially become an exploring Main Street program. And one of our first plans is to create a marketing arm through aggregate capital to help market downtown spaces and vacancies to local businesses. Through redevelopment of Main Street, Pulaski on Main could see about 50 new residents and um, we plan to help grow the population of the downtown. Next, we're gonna be talking about the restarting the farmer's market. We have started the preliminary planning and we plan to reopen on Memorial Day. Next, we're gonna talk about supporting downtown businesses and nonprofits with facilitating donations. So we have helped facilitate donations of $1,400 um, $1, total, 1000 to the Fine Arts Center, 1500, or, uh, 150 to the Pulaski Theater, and 250 to the Adair Theater. And our goal for 2023 is $2,000. Next, we also have Toys for Tots, which we raised $1,100, and all of the toys were distributed to kids throughout Pulaski County. Next, we'll be talking about business spotlights. This is a program that we started this year, and it's just one of the ways that Pulaski on Main is helping to creatively market local and downtown businesses. So we plan to do 10, um, working with the Southwest Times, and we have already completed four of them. Next, we're gonna talk about organizational involvement, starting with young professionals. So many of you know about Empower and Engage. That was a program uh, by the county, which I was actually involved with. Uh, but we wanted another program to kind of help recapture uh, people who went through the program and want something to help continue it, and also people that have not been selected for the program. So we helped to start the Young Professionals along with the Small Business Solutions and the Chamber of Commerce. Our first meeting was in October and we had over 20 to 25 people. Our next meeting will be in March and we, are, we, have, acted, or we have selected committee members and we are beginning to raise funds for that and we have already received a $600 pledge for Young Professionals. Next is the ELI program, and this is, the ELI program is designed to help teach um, people who may not have a business degree how to better operate. So we think this will be very beneficial for our downtown businesses, whether they need to work on accounting or some entrepreneurial needs. So this will be very valuable, and it starts in March. Next, we're going to talk about downtown events. Isn't it nice to see all those people on Main Street? So we're going to start with Music and Merchants. At Music and Merchants, we had over 2,000 people, 47 vendors, and this was actually our first one since the COVID period. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to say COVID. I know that's like a bad word now. <laughs> but... We had over 2,000 people, and I think it was a great showing, and I believe that we will have even more than that next year. So that, that picture is actually at some of the earlier stages, and, I mean, that looks like a good amount of people, but we had even more than that. I believe many of y'all, if not all of y'all, attended, and that was an amazing success. Next, we're going to be talking about the treat trail. We had over a thousand children. Felt like way more than that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say over, but the number could have been way more than that. So we could have had about the same number of children as we did for the music emergence. Um, there were kids everywhere, and it was it was great to see. Even on somewhat of a rainy evening, those kids were not saying no to free candy. <laughs> Neither was I, but. Uh, we, we did have over 30 businesses in Pulaski on Main's footprint contribute and 
helped to hand out candy, and even more outside of Pulaski on Main's footprint. And lastly, we're going to talk about the new fall event. So the success of music emergence and other downtown events like the Tree Trail have led us to the conclusion that we should add something else. So we're looking at adding a fall event that would be mainly agriculture themed and would we would work to include the Virginia Tech College of Agriculture in this. And we believe this would be a great ending to the, um, the farmer's market period. So we would basically end the farmer's market with this big fall event. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. I just wanted to say thank you again for listening and I wanted to ask if you had any questions. <laughs> Go back through it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> like I said, I, I like to keep things precise and efficient, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, I, you might mention the brochure <coughs> that you all passed out during the tree trail and the comments that you got from a lot of the adults that they didn't uh, realize the kind of businesses that were in the downtown. Yes, like Darlene said, uh, we made a brochure for businesses in, within Pulaski on Main's footprint, and the amount of responses that we heard that said, we didn't know there were this many businesses in the community was just astonishing. It was like one of the most frequent comments that we heard. So as we go through the next year and continue with Pulaski on Main's mission, we really want to just better provide marketing and help to put these businesses out there so that people of the community know about them and visit them frequently. Well, I'm going to say something even though that's not what this is about, but he showed the picture of him at the National Conference of Embryo. This was the National Conference, so there were people from every state in the union at this conference in Richmond, and he did a phenomenal job talking about Pulaski on Main. What he's not mentioning, I don't know whether it's modesty or he's just not a good marketer, is his uh, presentation with Pulaski Awesome. Uh, he was offered six different jobs in different <laughs> towns around the country. <laughs> um, but he did, a, he did a, a phenomenal job with his ear and his voice when he did this, the passion of wanting to represent the community of Richmond Town. So I don't know why he didn't mention that. But <laughs> I think that was just incredible. And in fact, they were disappointed <coughs> to hear that he could not come and do the same presentation in Boston this year. Um, one thing that we, Steve and I, talked about before was that I should be more modest. So <laughs> I, I tried not to include Steve that, promotes but, that. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I'll let him toot my horn for me. <laughs> Any other questions? I have to say thank you, you know, for, for all the work that you guys are doing. Obviously, the you know the the amount of different efforts that you guys have put forward is 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 exactly what we need. Um, and you can't speak enough about what the events, and obviously you described them, what they do um, for the image of our town. And so I, I like the way that you guys are the direction that you're thinking as far as uh, maybe revitalizing the, the farmer's market, you know, thinking about a fall event. I mean, those moments at each one of them, uh, the emotional connection and the way that people see the town. Right at that moment is just completely contrary to what they would at any other time, right? And so the more frequently. It's almost like shock oh. or amazement. I just saw you talked about the treat trail, as silly, silly as it was, you know, just, you dry, I just happened to, you know, have the, be passing through the town at the moment, you know, that there, and the energy level would have excited anybody, yeah. right? You know, just because there were so many people moving, it's like, man, what are they doing? What's going on? I need to be there, right? And the more times that happens, whether it's through mu musics and merchants, and when the farmer's market first really got started, it, it had a tremendous energy about it, right? And that was a weekly energy. 
<clears throat> through a very large period of time that people were thinking and talking and doing. Um, and so that's yeah, just exciting, it you is. know, and, and, it really is. and uh, it's, it's working, you know, and so keep it up. And I might want to add, um, I, you didn't say this, but the Plasco man, I think, was the one who did the mural in Counts Crossing. Yes. And I did came down there and painted a little bit with my kids. Um, they did most of the painting. I did more supervising. But um, they still talk about that thing that they painted and stuff like that. And so event, things like that, anything you can get people engaged with uh, and have a sense of, like, you, you feel like a sense of pride and ownership of their community is great and um the only thing i would ask is that you think about ways to, those sometimes those events and it's great to bring in different you know people but i think as much as you can connect those events to the local businesses i mean you know that i think because you have the person there and you want them to go to you know start you know you visiting this business well how do you you know you, you've got them there the business is there how do we can make that you know, use that synergy. Cause I do think the more you get people down here, like you were saying, I didn't know this was here. Well, maybe you should try their, you know, their food or their clothes or their, you know, whatever. And as much as that can be, you know, connected would be great. Yeah. And I completely agree with you, Mr. Reese. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm the biggest advocate for Pulaski. There is maybe, maybe Steve beats me, but that's it. I am so very proud of my hometown and where I come from and I will promote Pulaski the best of my ability. We're, we're really happy that you're doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dylan. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> OK, uh, with that, we'll move to the public comment period. Um, I have one speaker slip, um, Mark LeBlanc. <laughs> if you'd like to come forward and give your address. and. Uh, just adding a little bit or commenting a little bit on some of the things that, and I'm delighted that we're doing stuff to bring people in, but once again, here's a very visual aspect of people coming to the town, and there's still lots and lots of ways we could improve uh, with garbage all on the ground and trying to find ways to remedy that. Uh, secondly, we're talking about the tree trail and all the, the interesting things. I, and it's probably already done, and my kudos if it has, but we've taken a whole bunch of traffic lights out, okay? And we used to have traffic, you know, the, the walk buttons, no lights. And I've had to run across the street a couple of times because I'm a nuisance to the cars. So I'm asking, you know, you got those double, those big thick lines out in front of the, uh, the post office. We need some around each one of these uh, intersections actually on Jefferson too that people are going to be crossing and walking to show the cars that pedestrian has the right of way okay uh, another thing that I was thinking of when we were talking about going to um, two lanes on um, past Washington east of Washington I'm wondering whether anyone's considered and if you've already done this great but lines if if traffic is supposed to be going this way lines going that way they'll wear out sure but it would probably help some of the folks my age you know who go oh wait a minute this is two lane now because they've got it on like all these wherever you've got a double um exit and entrance ramp on the interstate you will have those lines saying uh -uh, you want to go this way you do not want to go that way so just as, as a suggestion for that finally folks we have a pothole problem in this town. I don't know whether it's been talked about or addressed, but we, we really do. I mean, significant potholes to where, and I'm not talking about just downtown, I'm talking about some of the approaches into downtown. And that's another thing that people think about, you know, and they're, they're new visitors. What are they gonna remember? That big pothole. So let's, give, let's not give people any reason to think negative about the town. Let's just do our job, clean up the town, Make it look like a place that people really want to come to, and they will. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, with that, we'll move on to your resolution. If someone wants to make a motion on, Mr. Mayor, I, I move that we adopt the resolution two zero two three zero nine, resolution 
appointing candidates to the Pulaski Redevelopment and Housing Authority and the Board of Zoning Appeals. Second. And may I have a roll call for that, please? <clears throat> Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Dawson? Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Mr. Reese? Abstain. Okay. All right, now if someone to make a motion, um, if you'd look at your consideration of February tw uh, 7th, 2023 minutes, and then make a motion we accept. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt uh, council minutes for Tuesday, February 7th, 2023, as written. Second. Second. And may I have a roll call for that, please? Mr. East? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Dawson? Aye. Mr. Quantz? Aye. Mr. Reese? Aye. All right. And moving right along, move to uh, the council comments. Um, Mr. Cl uh, Mr. East, do you have? I, I don't have anything this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Clark? Uh, just appreciate the um, hospitality that uh, the police department did for us and our tour and the fire department and the meal. So that's it. Mr. Dawson? agree with that one they did they did a fantastic job but um in that line of thinking how far out realistically could we could we get the conversation just the financial conversation kind of break down uh thinking uh, or forecasting you know the conversation about you know expensive different ways of looking at the uh fire and police you know uh, facilities conversation is that something realistically in the next month that we could look at or further out? Well, my original goal had been to follow your tour today with that discussion for next week, <coughs> uh, which was March 5th, fantastic. But I've also had my finance director out for a week and a half with COVID, so we're probably going to end up pushing that back to the second meeting in March, which is what they are okay. looking at uh, doing that. And then, of course, we have the budget process that we start internally uh, with a lot of That's all, thank you. We don't have Mr. Ratcliffe to. <laughs> Mr. Klontz. Nothing today. And Mr. Reese. Yeah, just two quick things. One, I've had some citizens concerned about um, people not understanding that a four-way stop is a four-way stop and running those lights. And I know that we can't necessarily um, you know, prevent people from running red lights. I've nearly been killed myself uh, going uh, through Madison, going across Fish Street on Madison, somebody just blatantly running a red light. Um, but it does make me think that, and I don't know if if it's the police or, or, but I did notice today that one of the stop signs on Washington, you know, going south on Washington, you know, towards the creek, it's kind of blocked by the tree there. And I'm thinking, you know, as that tree grows in and gets, it, it may become even less visible. And so some of our newer visitors may not, and even some of our older residents, you know, people may forget that that's now a four way stop. And and I, I think I did mention this before, but just the more, if it, whether it's flashing lights or whatever, I mean, let's, let's, let's do overkill this. And I think, cause I just have had people say, I've, you know, nearly been, you know, creamed by somebody running a red light. And I know we've had some issues before. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is, um, I assume you're gonna get to this, but um, I saw between this weekend about the, the, the water line, we're gonna get an update on water line issues, I assume, the Main Street project. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, Cause I think I heard a bunch of stuff and I just wanted, I think it would be good if we got out what's, what's going on. Um, because I would like to be able to tell people what's what's up. Thank you. Um, we've got lots of posts on these intersections, and we put a stop sign across so that there's two stop signs each direction that people are going. The one where it's supposed to be, but the extra one to help people get used to it across the street on one of the posts near the intersection. I think. Oh, and I'm sorry. And I also meant to ask, could we get 
I think on the comments, some yield to pedestrian signs in at when we were doing this. I think that would be go a long way to helping people know that they're sp just to slow down and you know be aware of. Stuff. <clears throat> I think that would be a, a good use of town funds. Mostly because I walk downtown and I don't want anybody to hit me either. <laughs> um, I have a feeling that a lot of the stuff, the issues will be, I know that, you know, when we implement the two way that it will be lines, I know that that's going to happen and stop signs will be different as we redevelop downtown's sidewalks. So as it jets out and stuff. So, um, but <laughs> people still complain about the, the speed limit going <laughs> out of town. I would love for council to consider talking about that some more just to see if I think you brought it up too about the go back to 45 as you go out before you hit 55 but um, but other than that um, I think that's it other than happy Mardi Gras um, <laughs> yes I went to Pensacola Florida this past week for Mardi Gras not to New Orleans because I'm not completely crazy I saw the pictures so <laughs> but um, but yeah, so let's move on then to the manager's report, please. Well, based upon uh, Mr. Bruce's request, uh, I certainly am going to give an update. Although we tried <coughs> to screen that very consistently as we can, but uh, the Facebook page as well as the internet. Um, we did have an issue about uh, a week and a half ago where uh, when trying to do a valve insertion on Jefferson Street, lost a piece of equipment into the hole. The pressure was so great it actually sucked the uh, tool into the hole. Uh, we managed to get it out with the assistance of a company that we buy the, uh, what they call um, a pitting tool that actually beats down this insertion valve. Um, and we thought we were gonna have uh, perhaps a month delay and having uh, that repair made. Um, I spent, as well as others, uh, probably about nine hours on the phone uh, calling different places and we managed to, with the assistance of uh, one of the companies, find a gentleman out of Raleigh who was willing to come up as soon as possible uh, with not only the right um, tool but with an additional uh, valve to be inserted and he did come up last week. Um, and did those valve insertions on both Washington and Jefferson. Unfortunately, the one on Jefferson, because there is a very high pressure in that main line, uh, did require uh, that um, a couple of streets lost water for a number of hours. It was actually finally returned to normal um, in the late afternoon, early evening, but it did um, cause the courthouse to close uh, when they heard it was going to be a several hour delay uh, before they could get water. And I know that the uh, businesses and residents on uh, West Main experienced that same loss. Uh, the gentleman uh, came in the next day, even though he told us he was gonna come in yesterday, he came in on Friday and actually made the connection with the Jefferson line and today uh, did the pressure testing that was required of the new line that's sitting in West Main uh, and took the first of what are required two water samples that have to be set off and have to pass certain standards before we can actually then connect uh, the laterals, the six of them that we plan. But uh, we should know by no later than mid next week if those two samples have uh, yielded the proper results so that they can then begin doing those laterals. Um, we have not lost any time from the standpoint that we were moving a little bit ahead of schedule. I think we can safely say we're still on schedule. Um, in the meantime, as I think the council knows because we announced it at their last meeting, we did put flashing red lights um, on at Washington and Third, as well as the stop signs. And my personal experience uh, has been uh, amazingly good in observing people uh, being mindful of that. And I think it's probably because they know traffic may be coming from the other direction. 
I think people are running through the stop signs uh, and what used to be the flashing lights, they have now been bagged um, at Washington and West Main because they know no traffic is coming in two directions. And obviously they're gonna have to break that habit <laughs> once we open that road uh, and traffic is then on it. Um, but we can certainly look at several of the suggestions that have come from both members of council and Mr. LeBlanc about what might improve uh, that situation. Next Monday, uh, we will have people on Third Street in one lane and in the correct lane. Uh, we will be putting out cones that will begin to direct people on East Main uh, to merge over into that single lane. Uh, there will be cones the entire length uh, the one lane that will be open will also have um, painted uh, the turn signal or the turn arrow uh, because we will be removing that turn lane uh, that currently exists. And uh, hopefully, uh, people will fall into that pattern fairly quickly so that we can then consider what would be the next step um, in bringing two way uh, in the opposite direction heading to the east. Uh, about that time, we may also be able uh, to open up that one lane on um, West Main so that we can start a similar kind of approach where we would get people acclimated to only driving in a single lane uh, to then bring this second lane in later. Uh, we're trying to do this in a phased way so that people do get acclimated, um, but I do think how the traffic is currently configured is influencing how people run, particularly that stop sign at West Main uh, in either direction because they just know there's no traffic coming. Um, and that's where I see the most um, violations at this point as I travel back and forth on that road. Um, anything else about West Main? <laughs> um, I'd love to do what several of you did and say I have nothing to say. <laughs> um, but I would say to you that uh, we have a number of projects that are in the works and are consuming a lot of our time. I think the council is aware that we have filled what was the vacant um, building official position. Uh, that gentleman was starting part-time with Mr. Clark and we will be full-time over the summer. In the meantime, we did have building official on the city of Radford who is assisting us and he's been a great help and is still at Fort Eastman and um, in the rear we placed him um, and we still have a couple of other vacancies that we are recruiting for. One I know in particular the council is interested in um, and we've identified some different uh, recruitment out emails to prospective individuals who might hold similar positions in other communities so that we can bring them in and do more to support that um, hopefully in the near future. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> All right. With that, um, just the reminder that our next council meeting is March 7th, 2023. Uh, closed session starts at 6. Open session starts at 7, as I have nothing else on our agenda. Happy Fat Tuesday, and I call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>